Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and thank you so much for being so patient while I took a little time away to go see a friend get married in New Orleans. It was quite the blast. It was my second time being in New Orleans, but I didn't really, I was there for a work-related thing the last time, so I didn't really get to enjoy New Orleans for what it was. I had a great time. I'll even pop up a little picture of me and Noel at the, the wedding, and yes, I am very tall, and also Noel is, I don't know, short? shorter than some people, most people. So we we are a uh, differently heighted couple. Is that is that the word? <laughs> Either way, I had a lot of fun, but did obviously take some time away from posting videos. And today we are going to kind of just do, I think, a recap of the three videos she's posted since I left to go on this trip and do my best to just give you like the important details plus obviously my commentary and my thoughts about what happened in those videos as we go along. So I'll leave a timestamp for where I talk about each one of those videos and the event that you only want to hear my thoughts on XYZ PDQ video. You know what I'm saying? And also, I'm just like, as I'm talking, noticing my voice is a little hoarse because also yesterday I did go see Lizzo. Like we literally flew back to Chicago, had a little bit of time to gather ourselves, and then we went to a Lizzo concert last night. So just been doing a lot. So apologies for the voice. And then you're going to be like, but Zach, that's how you always sound. Maybe, maybe. It's coming out of my mouth a little groggier than how I normally sound. Sound. So anyways, I think the video I have the most to say about is also the first one that comes up chronologically. It's the one called We Have to Talk, Rumors, Updates, Showing Proof. Uh, because it just, oh, it's so much of Amber Lynn just doing what she does best recently, which is just like whining and complaining about the people that watch her. I have a lot of thoughts about that, but I just like, it's so frustrating how much of the content she spends just complaining about people when like she talks about the thing that she loves about YouTube the most is just sharing her life, right? So she could be sharing things about her life on YouTube and instead she focuses on making these long rants about the people that don't like her on YouTube. It, it makes no sense, but I'll have more to say about that as we go. So in this video, we do get a little bit of an update about how she's feeling. I think at the time she was in maybe a lot of pain still, although that fluctuates throughout all three of these videos, whether or not she is or isn't in pain. And she's frustrated that the ER didn't see the problem, which is another ongoing theme throughout the three videos I'm going to cover. And she also talks about scheduling a CT appointment, which is something that she will actually go and do in the last video I cover. And I do just want to take some time right now to address her frustrations with the ER not catching things. I've seen so many people both like on comments in my videos and also like on Twitter and things like that talking about how she totally doesn't understand the ER's responsibility in terms of like giving her a diagnosis of what's wrong with her, right? So like most of the time when somebody goes into the ER, the ER's job is to triage that situation, make sure that they are, you know, taking care of anything that might be life-threatening. And then after they clear all the possibilities of like life-threatening issues, then they say, like, here's what your next steps are. This is likely what might be the problem or could be the problem. And usually ask you to follow up with, like, another doctor, your primary care physician, somebody like that. I can speak to that to some extent from the, the few, very few experiences I've had in either, like, an urgent care situation or an ER situation that usually their goal is to get the person that's there safe immediately and then give them next steps for how they can go about resolving the issue in the future. Historically, Amberlynn has used the ER in place of a primary care physician. That's something we've witnessed on her whole channel as a whole. Maybe not as much in recent history, but that's pretty much how she has used it in the past. And she even alludes to later in this video that she like 
had a follow-up call with the hospital that she went to for the ER visit where she was complaining. There's just a lot of confusing things happening right now with my health. I got a call yesterday from the hospital because I shared my experience. I had to because I was sent home from the ER um, with false information. And I had to share my experience. I had to let them know what happened. So I got a number and I called and I think it was like, not even an hour later. Um, I guess when situations like this happen, um, there is a person for that and they called and they're like head of the hospital or something. Um, I wish I had the right words for it, but I don't currently. I just feel my brain is a jumbled mess. And they explained the situation to me a little bit more and it has made things so much more confusing. And I just honestly feel like somebody failed her. Somebody failed her in understanding how the healthcare system works. And I wanna give some lenience because the healthcare system in the United States and the context of the United States is very much broken. But also like, it seems really unfair to put so much blame on the ER when she's out here talking about being an advocate for herself and like asking for things that she needs. That is very important when you're seeking out healthcare. And there are a lot of instances where people get misdiagnosed or, um, you know, are not taken seriously when they come in with concerns. But it's also very frustrating to see Amber Lynn get so frustrated when the ER gave her the recommendation to go follow up with her primary care physician. And then her primary care physician said, okay, here are the things we're going to do to find out what else it might be since they didn't resolve your problems. You know, it doesn't really feel like that ER visit didn't do what it was supposed to do. And one of the things I talked about in my last video about Amberlynn was this like double-edged sword that she recently has been, you know, wanting to share some things that are going on in her life and not sharing others. So like with the, the ankle injury, for instance, she didn't want to share about that anymore, but now she's kind of gone back to sharing about it since it's relevant to this health concern. Um, she even talks about that in this video. A part of me wants to share this experience because it's 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 a wild one. It's not one that I um, expected at all. And all of this did happen right after my fall. I don't know if they have anything to do with one another, but we are trying to figure that out. And of course, there's also whatever the other vague thing that's happening in her life right now is that like is not health related that is causing her like stress, anxiety and depression that she doesn't want to share about, but also like wants to bring up that she's also simultaneously dealing with that. Like, yeah, don't share anything you don't want to share, but also keep in mind that like when you don't share those things, people are going to speculate, which is what she's going to spend a good chunk of this video complaining about. So a little bit before she gets to the real complaining about reaction channels and the people who watch her. She she does bring up Mount Torrid, the pile of clothes sitting on her bathroom sink. You know, that pile of clothes on my sink that I keep showing you guys. It's because I don't feel good. I hurt. I hurt really bad. My breathing isn't normal. And it's like for people to literally make judgments on that pile of clothing on my counter when there's so many more horrible things going on right now is just, it just sucks. And I find it interesting now that the narrative has shifted from, or shifted to judging her abilities when she's been feeling not well to put away her clothes when originally she blamed it on just being like bored or disinterested in the actual task and also just says that in general it's a bad habit of hers. These are all clean or new regardless they need to be put away. We don't need to judge everyone has bad habits and this is simply just one of mine. So I am going to put some away. No, I am not gonna put all of them away. I get bored, I lose my mind, I get insanely distracted. So I'm gonna put some away. Here is a before 
and after we so yeah obviously there are worse things that could be going on in her life and are worse things going on in her life right now than a pile of clothes sitting on a bathroom sink for sure for sure but also this is what she doesn't realize is that originally she told us a completely different story about why those clothes were on the the bathroom sink and sure maybe she didn't want to admit that she was feeling pain or going through something at the time but this is what happens and I'm pointing this out because this is why people get frustrated and speculate about her and she doesn't like how reaction channels react to her and things like that. It's all because she tells this this contradictory story all the time where it's so easy for us to just bring out the comparisons of the videos and the receipts and the things that she says and she leaves things out so then people speculate and then she doesn't understand why people speculate. It doesn't make any sense to me. And also while we're here on the pile of clothes, later in this video she goes on this thing about how wifey is absolutely very supportive and helping her. You know, wifey's here and she's been wonderful and she's just been there for me. And people were wondering if she even went into the doctor's appointment with me. Yes, of course she did. Of course. But apparently just not supportive enough to like put away some clothes on on the bathroom sink. And you know what? Honestly, maybe wifey has other things she's doing that's helpful and supportive and that's not it. I just, you know, when when my partner's not feeling well or when I'm not feeling well, like we pick up the slack and like chores and things like that to help each other out. So that's just, you know a thought. Maybe wifey could help with that. But anyways, a good chunk of this video is just her complaining about reaction channels and or the people that watch reaction channels and or the people that watch her and don't watch reaction channels but don't like her. But why, I'm, why I really want to talk to you guys is because I got a message on Instagram. Um, there's this <sighs> reaction channel. Hate those words. It's just an excuse. Reaction channel is just an excuse to make money off of someone who literally is going through it, who is disliked, so it's okay to constantly speculate and spread rumors and judge. Like, you're a reaction channel, not a speculation channel, not a defamation channel. Um, so there is a reaction channel that people have mentioned before, and... I never looked them up because I didn't care, <laughs> gotta be honest. Um, I watched two reaction channels just to see, you know, what type of rumors are happening with me. I need to, you know, stay up on the ball game here. So someone sent me a, a message, it's a screenshot of someone's thumbnail and it automatically was just like, like assuming that I was lying about my ER visit. It seems like the particular reaction channel in this situation that has bothered her is Oh Lordy It's Shorty, who a lot of people have brought up to me. I haven't watched any of his videos, to be quite honest with you, because unlike Amberlynn, who says she doesn't watch reaction channels, but clearly does, uh, I really don't watch other reaction channels, and not, nothing against them, nothing against Jordy, nothing against any of them. It's primarily for me because I already watch Amberlynn's content once on my own for my own channel. Like, I'm not trying to watch it multiple times. So I honestly couldn't tell you specifically what this video is about that she's getting upset about, but she did show a thumbnail and I did go look to see whose video this was and I found his channel, found the thumbnail on his channel, so I'm presuming it's him. And based on the title of that video and the thumbnail, and also what Amberlynn says in the video. I assume that Jordy is suggesting or like talking about the possibility that potentially the clips from the traumatizing ER visit video that she most recently posted could have been from the same day as the clips from the ankle injury ER visit. Which interestingly enough is something that I joked about people speculating about in the video where I reacted to the traumatizing ER visit. Which was honestly so terrifying. Okay. You guys will never ever believe what happened. I am a mess. I don't know. I mean, she's probably right. People probably will not believe. <laughs> I'm sure there's people out there that are like, actually, this shirt is a shirt she was wearing another time she visited the ER, and I think that this footage isn't even real. 
Uh, but when it comes to things with her health, I'm just generally going to believe her because honestly, I, 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 who knows? I don't know. If she comes on here in two days and says, I'm so upset that nobody believes me that I went to the hospital and whoever, whatever. Well, girl, you are, you lived this experience literally just a month ago. Like, we're back at it again. But please, like, I, I also think, like, if you're seeing people say that, Amberlynn, I hope you just, like, acknowledge that, like, you know what the truth is, right? So, like, as long as you know what the truth is, it doesn't matter if people are saying they don't believe you. And for what it's worth, again, you know, Amberlynn has a lot to say about Jordy, and I'll say the same thing that I said when she included clips of me in her video and also when she most recently talked about Young Dumb Honey Bun. Anything that Amber Lynn has to say about this person in her video is likely or possibly or probably taken out of context. She's probably not sharing all the, the other things that happened in that video. And like I said, I haven't watched it, so I'm not going to speak about whether or not I think Jordy's video is good or bad. And instead, I'm probably going to spend a lot of this time talking about why Amberlynn is so silly for, you know, amplifying his voice, my voice, Young Dumb Honey Bun's voice, anybody's voice on her channel. She does talk about how this experience with this most recent lung situation has reminded her a lot about when people didn't believe that she had cancer. This reminds me very much of my cancer experience where everyone thought I was lying. Not everyone, a big portion of people. I have never, ever given you guys a reason to think that I was lying about anything medical. There has never, ever been any sort of proof of me lying about anything medical. Nothing. I have never, ever lied about anything medical. And I actually disagree with her. There's definitely always been some collective of people who thought she was lying about it. Um, but I would say primarily, at least up until Nick Akato involved himself and like, implied that she was lying about having cancer, at least up until that point, I would say the majority of the people who watch her or reaction channels really believed her when she said that she had cancer. And in fact, I seem to remember most of the reaction channels at the time saying that they believed her and in fact like shitting on people who were actively trying to call her a liar and things like that. Also though, that's just my memory and I can say at least what I know that I have felt this entire time, which is that I've always believed that she had cancer and in general, I tend to believe her when she says that she's experiencing some kind of health-related issues because I don't know enough about those subjects to say whether or not she's telling the truth or not. And I would just assume that a person would not come onto the internet and lie about those things, and I will just believe them until I have some kind of solid, concrete evidence to suggest otherwise. And that's why I don't really like covering the, these particular aspects of her life. Like, I will cover them for the sake of we're talking about the overall progression of, like, I guess, like, for lack of a better word, storyline of what's happening on Amber Lynn's channel. But I do genuinely worry about her health. It is something that is concerning to me. And especially recently, I, I feel a lot of the ways that I was feeling when she got diagnosed with cancer to begin with. It's, it is very scary and I hope that she is taking it seriously and I would encourage the people who watch me to take her seriously as well. And then she goes on quite a lengthy section where she complains about the people who watch her and blames them for poisoning her life and also talks about, you know, not letting them stop her from doing something she loves and wants her passion to come back. But the portion of you who hate me so much that it just like lives in your fucking veins to make me feel like shit, to call me a liar, to spread rumors, you guys are poisoning my life. And honestly, just dampening my spirit. And this is my job. I have to be strong. I have to have a thick skin. I know a lot of people could say, leave YouTube. Why stop doing something that I love? I want the passion to come back. I want the love to come back. It's just hard right now because it's like, 
I feel like I'm being tortured in a very 2022 way. And honestly, I understand the point of view of like not wanting to let the haters get you down. I think that's real. I think that's reasonable. Uh, what I don't necessarily believe or understand is that she loves doing this anymore. Like, especially because the past couple weeks outside of her like updating stuff about her health has been just her like ranting about various people who make content about her, ranting about the people in her comments, ranting about the people who watch her. And it's just like, what part of this is the part that you enjoy and like at this point. And I honestly think she has a focus problem, as in like she focuses her attention on the wrong things. And I know I've said this before, but she focuses so much energy on the people that don't like her and on the people who have nasty things to say that she doesn't give attention or nurture the audience that does seem to like her for whatever reason. You know, one thing I've learned personally as a YouTuber is that I can't choose who watches me, right? Like, there are going to be people that don't like me that hate watch me and leave hateful comments and that's just how it is. But I can choose how I grow and encourage a community that likes me for who I am, likes me for the content I make. And I try to focus on those people because those are the kinds of people I want to keep coming back to my videos. In fact, in a lot of cases, I've learned that when I don't give attention to hateful people, that's really what they want. And so when they don't get it, they just move on with their lives. That's not always the case. Certainly, there, there are a lot of people who like are in my videos in the comments every day to let me know that they don't like me and that's fine. But it's just like the more I encourage the people who do enjoy my videos and make it a place on my channel that they can continue to enjoy, the more those people come back. You know what I'm saying? And she even does, at the end of this little section of ranting, talk about the people who reach out to her and tell her how much they enjoy her videos. And then I remember all the people who watch me that actually truly support me. I have so many people who message me and say, you know, your videos help me with my anxiety or whatever it may be. And to those of you... I'm sorry that this is a rough patch for me right now and I'm sure I'm not helping with your anxiety and I'm very sorry for that, but this is just like, it's reality. And I think that's great and I think she should focus on those people. She needs to shift her focus to those people because could you imagine if during this portion of the video, she had just said, like she could still share, hey, I've been struggling, my health is crappy, I'm not feeling great, I'm not in a great mental health space, but something that's been very helpful to me is all the people who have reached out and said very kind and nice things, who have who have talked about how much my videos help them. Like, that has been so, so great in helping me process things. Like, you don't have to start or lead off with the negativity. And in fact, like, I mean, I would encourage you to just not mention the negativity <laughs> at all, but you, you certainly could at least not start there. And she also talks a lot about having to prove herself because of this reaction channel. So the fact that I have to literally sit here and prove because of this reaction channel, I want to say also, a lot of people always say, why do you care what they say? Why do you care what the reaction channels say? Because they're impressionable. They have large audiences. And I just want to be clear, you don't have to prove anything. Like, if this is true, if all of this stuff happened and you know that it's true, then that should be enough. That should be it. You don't have to prove or defend yourself against crazy-ass accusations. I remember one time, it was like 2020, it was early 2020, before the pandemic really fully hit us, right? And somebody had made comments and was going around making comments about me being HIV positive. And it was like the most ludicrous accusation based in, in almost literally nothing. And you didn't see me going to get an STI test and bringing it over and showing it on camera because I knew that was like such a crazy allegation that I wasn't going to waste my time trying to prove myself to that, let alone give the people who were saying that more attention. You know what I'm saying? I knew what my truth was and I just stuck with it and, and 
didn't care if other people didn't believe that. And then she goes on to talk about how she also has to prove herself because reaction channels are impressionable and have large audiences. And I do have to say, like, I'm easily one of the larger channels in, in the realm of, like, people who cover her on their channel, right? And even I have 70,000 less people than Amber Lynn has subscribing to my channel, okay? And so I guess maybe in my case I sort of get it because that's reasonably sort of similar. Jordy, who she's talking about in this video, has 25,000 subscribers, which is 175,000 less people subscribing to him than Amber Lynn Reed does. Like, you have the larger platform in this case, and you're amplifying the voices or the voice in this situation of a person that is so much smaller than you and you're upset about spreading false speculation about you. You're, you're amplifying that voice. And just as a note of what that like kind of amplifying does for a channel, in the video where she recently like showed clips of me, when I reacted to that video, there's an analytics thing that you can go to for each video and see how many people subscribe to you just based on each of the, of the videos. And just on that video alone, I got 300 new subscribers. And for comparison, on a regular video, any given video, I usually get 50 to 80 new subscribers per video, okay? So a vast difference than what I normally get. And while she doesn't name Jordy in this video, I would assume people on the internet are smart enough to figure out how to go look for that thumbnail that she showed in her video and pair it up with a, a thumbnail from another reaction channel, okay? It's not that hard. If I could do it, I really believe all y'all super sleuths of the internet out there could do it too. So just imagine how many new subscribers he got because Amber Lynn is out here amplifying his his voice, his message. Like, why are you going to go tell people about this man that you don't agree with? It doesn't make no sense. She also does comment that, like, she thinks a lot of people probably form their opinions based around what reaction channels say. And I do think that that's probably true to some extent, but also want to emphasize that a lot of people only seek those people out because they want to see if other people like myself got the same impression of her video as they did, right? Like a lot of people base their opinions about Amber Lynn off of the videos Amber Lynn posts herself. And I don't think she gives herself enough credit for that. She just wants to give all the credit for that stuff to those of us reacting to her content. Like, it's her own intentional, vague, like, I'm going through something right now type of content that leads people to speculating. And she does share some paperwork from the ER, which I find to be convincing. I don't have any reason to believe that it's not authentic or I guess haven't seen anybody else say that they have reason to believe it's inauthentic. But I did get a number of people who were DMing me about the part of her uh, ER paperwork that talked about getting HIV and hepatitis C testing and people being worried about that, concerned about that, and I don't know. I, I've heard from folks, though, that that could be a part of some routine testing that's done in ERs. I don't really know about that or can speak to it either way, but I would, I guess, like, caution people just to be a little thoughtful about that kind of speculation and things like that just because in the queer community, um, queer people have had things like HIV, as I just previously <laughs> talked about with myself. They've had that like weaponized against them and things like that. And I think most people were just intentionally concerned because she showed this paperwork but didn't mention anything about that on her own in her own part of the, the video. I, I do just wanna like caution people to be thoughtful about that just because a lot of people have had that weaponized against them. It was something that massively impacted gay people um, during the AIDS epidemic and it, it can be hurtful. So just keep that in mind moving forward. I think most people had great intentions, uh, but just something to be thoughtful about moving forward. Also as a part of her proof, she shows a text message to a group chat that's allegedly with her family and, and claims she would never lie to her family. So I'm gonna post a screenshot 
of literally maybe 10 minutes after it happened, I messaged my family group chat, people I would never lie to. Those people know the ins and the outs of everything I'm currently going through right now. They're the people who are there and support me, real tangible people, and they're my family. Here's a screenshot of me telling them. I honestly think she probably should have stopped with the paperwork because this is probably just going to honestly lead to more speculation and opening herself up to being disappointed when people don't believe this as a piece of proof. Because honestly, truly, it's not a solid source of evidence for her, you know? Like, one, she she claims she would never lie to her family. And it's like, how do we know that? <laughs> how do, like, most people on the internet know you as a liar. So, like, just because you say you wouldn't lie to your family? Like, why Why do we necessarily have to believe that? It's kind of like back when she used to say things like, oh, Becky will vouch for me. Well, yeah, of course Becky will vouch for you. Like, why, why wouldn't Becky vouch for you back then? Maybe, probably not now. But then too, this could also just easily be a group text, group chat with anybody. There's nothing indicating that these people are her family or that she couldn't have created a, a fake group chat on her own, you know? Like... It's just things that I find silly that she included this. She also says some people can't think for themselves. Some people can't think for themselves and that's reality. Some people cannot think for themselves. I'm not saying specifically you, the person currently watching this video or your freaking sister. I'm just saying there are people out there who view YouTube videos who cannot think for themselves. So she's basically saying y'all are dumb. <laughs> and and I think the thing is, is I think most people are thinking of themselves or for themselves uh, because a lot of people don't agree with a lot of my takes on my channel. And that's fine. I appreciate that. But I'm just saying, like, she, she thinks that there's just this, like, hive mind of, like, people agreeing with, like, me or other reaction channels. And I think a lot of people certainly are thinking for themselves. And another example of her highlighting the terrible things people say about her or do, do or whatever it is, she talks about the, the trend of the beanbag in a hurry. The trend of hating me. You know, the only way that I know that for sure is stupid shit like beanbag in a hurry. If it wasn't a trend to make fun of my weight, that would have never became a thing. And I just want to emphasize that the literal reason that people even know about Beanbag in a Hurry is that she made a whole video about how she caught it on tape, somebody walking behind her, and in her words, I honestly, it's very indistinguishable, like... They could be saying anything, and if you listen hard enough, you can make yourself hear beanbag in a hurry. But she did a whole video pointing out that somebody called her a beanbag in a hurry. Someone messaged me on Snapchat. I'm not going to say who or anything like that. But they said, so do you not care that the guy walking into the Chinese restaurant called you a beanbag? I had to reread that at least 10 times. I was like, what? So they replied and said, re-watch your video in the Chinese restaurant when you walked out before Becky and the man walked in and said, wow, the beanbag is in a hurry. The exact words were, good lord, the beanbag is in a hurry. Thank you. Oh, thanks. That's over there, probably <laughs> Where, where is Becky? She highlighted that. She she made that a thing for her channel. Nobody else did. And when she brought it up, people started making memes out of it. I mean, I still to this day get comments like of the early people that are like, faster than a beanbag in a hurry. Here quicker than a beanbag in a hurry. So it's just like she created the meme. She she highlighted that negativity. That is something she did, just like she has with this whole video. She also seems to have some kind of thoughts on how she thinks reaction channels should operate. And I just feel reaction channels, you're supposed to react to what I'm saying, not speculate what I'm saying. 
And I don't know who put her in charge of reaction channels or what the definition of a reaction channel are, but I think reacting can include speculation. It's certainly something I try to avoid, uh, although I still do sometimes, but like, I, I think specul speculation could be a reaction to the, the vagueness in your videos sometimes. And she wraps up the video just letting us know she's not going to let us win. But I'm not going to step away. I'm not going to back down because I'm not going to let you guys win. I'm not. And honestly, truly, I think she needs to worry less about winning some kind of battle against the people of the internet and focus on just herself and winning the battle with herself, honestly. She's allowed this weird, toxic, parasocial relationship with the people who dislike her the most on the internet. She keeps giving them time, attention, energy, and all of these wrong things have led her down this path of negativity to the point that, like, Based on this video, it looks like she's really upset. And my genuine advice is advice I've given her in DMs, <laughs> which she was DMing me a, a month ago or whatever that was, but also in countless videos over and over and over again, which is you really need to set some boundaries. Like you, you claim that you had set boundaries where you're only reading comments for the first hour, but I say that because boundaries are an important part of managing your mental health and clearly being this wrapped up in the negativity in your comments and the negativity coming from reaction channels has gotten you in a place that's not great. And it's taking away your passion for YouTube, your love of YouTube, and it's clearly not helping you with literally anything. I don't know how it's serving you in a positive way at all outside of like it seems to be the only thing interesting about your channel right now is you ranting about all the people that don't like you. So let's move into the second video I missed while I was away, which was the one called Weigh In, I've Gained Weight, vlog. And I will say the way she spelled I've, like the contraction without an apostrophe, really made me think we might be getting some kind of what's after like I've K-pop moment. But unfortunately, it's just another mundane Amberlynn Reed video. And I mean that. I probably have the least to say about this particular video because there's so much in it that's just like mundane, boring stuff, including Legos. She does include some food content, and I will make you watch this clip of her cutting this watermelon in the most aggressive, uncomfy way possible. Me clearing my throat. <laughs> I am cutting a watermelon. So I love me some watermelon. Usually I get pre-cut watermelon, which I love. I don't have to do it. I don't have to do the messy work. But I decided to get a full one. So here I am cutting it. I'm just cutting them in triangle pieces. But then with this last piece, I cut it in a way that like I could see people doing it at parties. So it's like a simple way, situation type deal, where you just grab. And I'll also show you this clip of her making these wheat thin egg salad bacon things that is giving very much broke college student fridge is empty situation type of deal i'm gonna take egg salad and just put it on each wheat thin next step is some crispy bacon just a piece on each one please test That hits all the spots. But that's about it of the mundane things <laughs> that I will share with you. Otherwise, it's mostly an update on her, her weight and what's happened since the ankle injury happened. She mentions that she turned to food to cope, which I guess she could have turned to her psychologist or psychiatrist for that, but she also still probably uses food as a coping mechanism, regardless of whether or not she's in therapy. And she tells us that she got up to the 490s again, but is currently at 481.6 and I think there's probably if I were to guess some reasonable speculation about at least two things one what's going on with Ozempic where she what happened to her <laughs> like that's a lot of weight to gain I, I think it was something around probably 30 pounds to gain while you're also allegedly still taking Ozempic and again her lack of bringing Ozempic up 
I think leads to people speculating that she's no longer doing it. And so, of course, she's probably going to get frustrated that there's speculation that she's not on Ozempic anymore, but she also just full on stop talking about it. So what are people supposed to do, you know? And honestly, maybe it's none of our business, but I, she wants to share some aspects of her life. She does share some aspects of her life and then she gets upset when people have follow-up questions about the things she's already shared. You know what I'm saying? I also think there's probably some reasonableness of people being like, where's wifey? What, what was wifey doing in this situation? Like, you said you were bed bound, so realistically, wifey's the one bringing you food. How are you doing all of this binging and stuff like that? And I don't know, who knows? Her, I would be very curious to have a better understanding right now of what her definition of supportive wifey is being. You know what I'm saying? And then the last video that she posted while I was away or busy with other things is called CT scan got more bad news admitted into hospital vlog. Yeah, I'm not gonna play a ton of clips from this. I do have clips that I want to share with y'all. As a content warning of like what's gonna come up is there's gonna be more conversations about things like cancer, her health, and things like that. So just keep that in mind as we're moving forward. So she starts the video off talking about how she's stressed about having to marinate and the fact that she has a CT scan and therapy. I have my psychologist appointment, which is like therapy, hardcore therapy, which I'm not looking forward to at all. But a big reason why is because I have my CT scan today. And before my CT scans, I like to spend the whole day kind of just like marinating in the fact that I have to go do this because I hate it so much. But I can't because now I have to marinate in the fact that I'm about to probably go cry in therapy. And it's almost like maybe you could use the therapy appointment to talk about all of this marination. <laughs> like maybe that would be a good use of that time and to talk to your therapist, psychiatrist, psychologist. Honestly, she goes back and forth between all of those words, even in the span of this video, to be honest with you, that I'm not sure which one she's using or she just doesn't realize those all three mean different things. But yeah, I would think it might be a good idea to spend some time talking with your therapist, psychiatrist, psychologist, whoever it is, about how you manage those feelings. But in general, she's feeling better. She even shows herself using this little puff thing. I don't know what it does. She showed herself using it. And of course, she still takes time to complain about people not liking her Legos. And I literally just uploaded a video and people be complaining about me doing Legos. You guys, come on. I always show you my Legos and you guys request, why don't you show the process? So I do it in like 40 second clips, like, God, I do what's requested and then people get mad that I do what's requested. Like, when am I going to win? And honestly, I think her Lego content has some much needed improvement on it. I think she has tried to make it a better portion of her vlog, I guess. She like gave some backstory about like why Legos are interesting to her. She shows herself building it. I think, I think she's definitely improved on it. All that to say is like, people can still not like it. <laughs> like, you're literally never going to please everybody. And it's possible that the people who are saying, hey, I would love to see more, like, narration of what you're doing, the process, etc., are not the same people who just, like, don't like Lego content, period, you know? So, I, it just, it's just wild to me that, again, she's spending so much time focusing on the people who don't like it. When I did look at her comments on this video, and there were people that were saying, hey, I, I appreciate the Lego content, so just keep that in mind, bestie. Another thing that's going to come up a lot in this video, and I'll probably show you other clips later, potentially, but just really quickly, are these two clips of, the, of her using this name, Feline? So we got some new chairs, uh that Feline put together. You ready to go, Feline? Like, who the fuck is Feline? And this is, again, she's gonna start all this speculation because she's just introducing a new name that nobody's ever heard of before, and she's gonna get mad that people are making assumptions about who Feline is or isn't or whatever, and it's just, like, so dumb. It's so dumb, especially to introduce it in this particular video where she does share, like, some serious health updates just so that she can go on to end up probably being mad about it later when people are like, who is she? Who's Feline? 
my thoughts, my speculation in this moment <laughs> is that it's just another stupid name for wifey, to be quite honest with you. But who knows? Who knows? Because Amber Lynn doesn't tell us shit. So she gives an update after she sees her psychiatrist and she talks about how it's a good appointment. She also talks about how she is being such a great advocate for herself, has a lot of different types of doctor's appointments coming up, including one with a lymphedema specialist, which I think she was supposed to have like a week or two ago, but it got canceled by the specialist, not her. And she she's looking forward to that. Now she also gives the update that she did go and get the CT scan. During the CT scan, it sounds like they found fluid on her lungs, so they admitted her to the ER, which I guess is what she's saying when she says in the title of this video that there was a hospital stay. She has a discussion with some of the doctors at the ER that it could possibly be cancer, and they advise a lot of different follow-up, including an additional CT scan of her abdominal area, and also obviously following up with her primary care physician and things like that. And of course she does have some additional conversations about being frustrated with her initial ER visit. And I just like, still am so irritated because I, it seems like the ER did do their due diligence to take care of her in this situation and did advise her, hey, like you should follow up with your primary care physician in case there is something we didn't see or you have additional questions. And that's what she did. She took their advice. So when she's talking about like advocating for herself because she still felt like there was something wrong, well, yeah, you, you did what you needed to do. You scheduled the doctor's appointment on the recommendation of the ER. And honestly, so much of the the video I felt was like very genuine, authentic. I appreciated her, sh the way she shared, the way she talked about her, you know, nervousness about what this could mean for her health. I thought it was all fine. And then out of nowhere, like she's like literally one second, you know, talking about wanting people to pray if they pray and be thoughtful and uh, positive and send thoughtful vibes, positive vibes to her. She's doing all that one minute and then the next minute she just like flips and starts complaining about reaction channels and people getting mad about clickbait and comparing herself to David Dobrik and Ethan Klein. I um, am an agnostic gal, but I want prayers. I need prayers. I'm begging for prayers. I know that might not make sense to a lot of people, but I feel like when your life is on the line, and you feel like you're dying, you start to call out to God even if you don't know if he's real. So I hope the reactions are happy. They might get some good clicks and some good money off of uh, their reaction to this video. But um, this is my fucking life and my job is to vlog it. This is literally my life. My job is to monetize my life. So that's on that. So you can say what it is. People calling my videos clickbait. Go to David Dobrik, okay? Go to fucking Ethan Klein's channel and tell them the same thing. David Dobrik has a whole merch line that is literally just clickbait. <laughs> like, literally the word clickbait. And honestly, I think a lot of YouTubers, most YouTubers, do try to put titles that people will click on. The, the clickbait part of it is the part that's like, you put something just to get them to click on it, and then the video is nothing about that or nothing like it. Or like you're intentionally making a thumbnail that you think will get people to click on it, and then that's not necessarily reflected in the videos. I'm not sure Amberlynn's most recent videos, to me, say clickbait, but I can see why people think that, you know what I'm saying? And I just am also like not really sure I understand why she is comparing herself to Ethan Klein and David Dobrik in this situation because as far as I know, they haven't clickbaited their health, you know? I mean, I don't really keep up with them like that, but the concern seems to be from people that watch Amberlynn that they're concerned that she is like intentionally using her health to like get more views and things like that and like clickbaiting it and highlighting it in a way that is gonna get people to click on it even though it might not necessarily be a serious or whatever. I think that is my understanding of why people are upset with the titles and thumbnails and things like that that Amberlynn has been using. I, what I will say is I do think that she, in the past few weeks, has intentionally been putting 
images of herself eating thumbnails, images of herself crying in thumbnails. You know, she is choosing those things that she knows does get a reaction out of people. It is very clear that she's doing that. But honestly, it's such a weird vibe to follow up such serious and important health updates with this, like, long-ass rant about people who don't like her. Again, your focus is off. You're focusing on the wrong things. You need to focus your energy on other stuff that will better serve you. And she also compares herself to Chantal and Chantal raging. I don't even know why I started ranting about that. Like, I guess I have my own little raging moment moments. Um, Chantal's not the only one. <laughs> And honestly, for me, this part at the end of this video is nothing like a Chantal rage at all. Like, it's way more mellow. There's no bigotry in it. It's just her complaining. So I think it's very different. But why she continues to openly compare herself to Chantal and highlight ways that she thinks they're similar. Like, why do you want to be compared to this woman? Why do you so badly want people to draw these connections between y'all because Chantal is not somebody you will ever catch me comparing myself to in any kind of way. I do not do not want to be associated with that woman, let alone with one of the worst things about her, which is when she starts raging on the internet, because that usually includes a lot of racism, bigotry, etc. when Chantal does it. But yeah, that's about that for that video as well. In general, I, I do want to just be clear. I want the best for Amber Lynn. I don't know enough about how lungs work, what nodules on lungs look like, what fluid on the lungs looks like to know how serious or not serious this is, but she seems to be concerned about it. And I hope that she does take that seriously. I hope that she continues to advocate for herself, whatever that means or looks like for her, and I hope that she gets better. I, I think sometimes people have a hard time separating, like, oh, we don't like everything about Amber Lynn, but also realizing, like, she's still a human and I don't want her to suffer any more than I want anybody to suffer, you know? So I, I hope she does take care of herself. I hope the doctors can help treat whatever the underlying cause of all of this mess is. But I also hope she will, for her own mental health, take a break from the comments, take a break from the reaction channels. I, I appreciate whatever view you're giving me, Amberlynn, but like, y you don't have to watch. You don't have to read the comments, so don't. Take care of yourself. You, you clearly have enough other shit going on in your life that like, the last thing you need to be worried about is what Oh Lordy, it's Jordy's doing over there on his channel. You know what I'm saying? So moving forward, I'm gonna do my best to not speculate too much on her health diagnosis, things like that. I will probably, just as a forewarning to everybody, be taking it at face value for what she says it is, unless there's something else that would suggest otherwise. Um, and I wish her well. That's all I have time for today. It's kind of a long video because we were playing a lot of catch up besties. So thanks so much for sticking it out all the way through with me. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If it's your first time on my channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Hit the bell button so you get notifications every single time I post a new video. Leave me a kind comment with your thoughts on what's going on and hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media, including Twitch my gaming channel, check out my merch, all of those things, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!